Radio Rahim here with Don Charles in the corner this Saturday night with Derek Chisora facing Dillian White, which is a highly anticipated fight. I thought the first fight was fight of the year. How do you come into this fight to change what seemed to be a very small margin of victory? Well, it wasn't a victory. Uh, on records, it says that Dillian White got points, split points decision. Um, I believe we won the fight. Worst result that they could have awarded us would have been a draw. We would have taken a draw. But you know what? We're here today um, to rectify uh, that result. So with that said, you feel like you won the fight, but didn't get it on the card. So do you feel that adjustments need to be made to, to best whatever it was that the judges didn't see the first time to get that win officially this time? Most definitely, 100%. You know, again, I don't know if it's, uh, it's not well documented. That was Derek Chisora's first fight back with myself because we split for two years prior to that fight so taking that into consideration the performance he gave us uh, was a, a good performance but we didn't have enough in the tank to sustain for the duration of the fight of 12 rounds so he worked really well for the first uh, six seven rounds then it dipped which allowed Dylan White to come back to the degree where they, they had an argument for like a draw like I said but he got a split on us. Um, but of course, we're going to rectify the mistakes we made. We made loads of mistakes in that fight. Uh, we, we've, got, we've looked at it uh, to, to, to close up the doors and the windows, you know. <laughs> and uh, now, we trust me, we, 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 we've polished up our, our right. We have to, you know. Dylan White is an improved fighter. So is Derek Chisora. I keep hearing people saying Dylan, Dylan White is the uh, most improved. But they never give any credit to Derek, which is all usually the case, but that's fine. Um, like I said, behind the, uh, the closed doors, we've rectified uh, uh, the holes where we're like, leaking shots. Many people have made much of the physical conditioning. It's visible that we see with Chizura this time. Mm -hmm. You can see that he's slimmer, see that he's fitter. Mm -hmm. How does that affect the game plan? Does he, is he able to do different things, more things, or is he able to do the same things better? What do you do with a guy better conditioned in the second fight? Well, generally, when you're in that sort of condition, you're not carrying excess weight that you shouldn't be carrying, like body fat, for instance. His body fat has been reduced dramatically, hence why you seeing the shape he's in, and which will allow him to perform to his full capacity for the duration of the fight. Does Derek Jazeera have any boxer in him? Because we know he's got brawler. We know he likes to stand in the middle of the ring and trade. That was what the first fight was like. Neither one of these guys took a step back. Mm. Are we doing the same thing again, or are we going to see something different? Well, he said it in the ring. You know, he's coming to fight. He always comes to fight. You know, so, you know, by any means necessary, uh, I believe Derek generally only fights one way, with the exception of the Takam fight where he opted to uh, rope a dope. Um, but generally, he's a front foot fighter and nothing changes. A lot of people expect that Dylan, and it's his best decision, is going to try to make this a boxing match. You know, he talks about his agility. He's shown that he's a bit more nimble than heavy guys mm -hmm. tend to be. If that is what you face on Saturday night, how does Derek counter that? We've, we've faced many oppositions who can do exactly that and better. Robert Hellenius, before Derek beat him, again, got uh, lost on a split. Uh, Vitaly Klitschko, you don't get better than that. Most powerful heavyweight on the planet for the last 15 years. Okay, we negotiated and negated our way around that. Um, Dylan White, I wouldn't even put him up in those brackets. So if we couldn't, if Chisora couldn't be successful against well-schooled boxers, like I said, Robert Helen is in his time before uh, he fought Chisora, he was knocking everybody out. And he was a really good, well-educated boxer and good, a very good variety of punch selection. And then we can box against that style. Any fighter, any trainer will tell you that boxing is a majority mental. Some say 80%, some even say 90%. Mm -hmm. We know that Derek is, has had his challenges mm -hmm. keeping focused. Mm -hmm. Going into this fight, feeling like he won the first fight and didn't get the decision, but having success since then, all of these things, the new conditioning, how do you keep him focused and committed to the game plan, believing that this time will be different? Experience is a, is a lot of things. And as you know, he's uh, integrated uh, Mr. David Hay. He's brought into the equation. We never had that before. All that experience that Hay had gotten over the years and the successes that he had, there's a reason why he was successful inside the ring and outside the ring. 
and he's brought that onto what we already had. So I, you know, life is marginal. You know, everything is marginal. It, maybe that's what Derek Chisora needed. Someone like him, like David Hay, to step in and say, right, this is what I did to 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 win the big Grand Slams. Hmm. It's very very marginal. Like I said, we've tried. Trust me, in the past it was it wasn't lack of trying. We've tried, and I hold my hand up. Yeah. Uh, when Hay came in, I rejected it initially when Derek first t mentioned it to me. Then I thought about it. Because I'm not an egotistical person and selfish, I'm looking after my fighters' interests. So it made a lot of sense to me that, yes, because of the history we had with David Hay, I, I have to overlook that and forgive and move, move on. If it's going to benefit my fighter, that's all I want. Hmm. Now, assuming this fight goes Saturday night the way you want, Derek wins the fight. What's the best move for him and his career, like, uh, matchup-wise? Does he do a rubber match with Dylan to settle the score? Are you looking for a Joshua fight? You said you'd only been with him one fight prior. This will be your second. Are you guys ready for a Joshua fight? Does that present itself? Well, I'm not a promoter, as you know. I'm not a manager either. So I leave that to the promoter and the manager. Obviously, they're going to consult me. First thing, we must not overlook Dylan White. This is a very dangerous uh, customer. <laughs> client, however you may, uh, fighter, uh, we have to take care of business on Saturday, and I believe we're going to be victorious, and after that, then ask me that question again, and I'll answer you. <laughs> and lastly, you, you know, uh, you're a, a scientist, if nothing else, for certain, a scientist and a, a world uh, trainer, so looking at the last big heavyweight fight, which was only a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. I'm curious to get your opinion on what you saw a couple Saturdays ago with Tyson Fury, mm -hmm. Dante Wilder, who won that fight, and how you saw, how you, how you perceived the fight going. The Fury uh, Wilder fight? Yeah. Right, basically, I have to salute the Gypsy King. Uh, nobody uh, gave him the chance that uh, he would do what he did after the long layoff from all his problems, all his demons and stuff, you know, nobody thought he would turn up and, uh, uh, and, and put, put up such a performance. Um, it didn't do anything that, that surprised me personally because I kind of predicted that it's so hard. Remember, I've trained Derek to fight him twice mm -hmm. and it's hard to get a game plan against him because the guy is just uh, extraordinary. Um, how did I think the fight went? Again, I'll go against the grain, not because I want to. I've examined the fight on the night and prior uh, post-fight, um, draw is probably the right result. You think that, well, I, I doubt it's a draw again. If they do it again, mate, mate, mate. Oh, sorry. If they do it again, mm -hmm. do we see a uh, outboxed Dylan, I mean an outboxed uh, Deontay Wilder, or do we see a knocked out right. Tyson Fury? Right, again, they're both going to go back and look what they did right, what they did wrong. Wilder's only chance to beat Fury is to knock him out. And, but that's going to be very difficult to do because the mistakes Fury made in the first fight, he will go with his coach, Ben Davis, and uh, correct them. And you're going to see a very similar fight, very cagey. Wilder will show more respect in the sense that Tyson's boxing IQ is very high, very, very high. And, um, yeah, again, you're going to see uh, – they'll probably fight three times. There's a, there's a – it's one of those that they're going to fight probably about three times, in my opinion. Well, while we're handicapping rematches, I heard there's one coming up this Saturday. <laughs> How do you see that fight ending in a perfect world? And, and it's a victory to us, but we, we, we will be victorious. And I really will go as far as saying, just, uh, Derek, you heard him in the ring earlier on. He said he will stop, he will stop, uh, uh, force a stoppage. Does he have to get a stoppage? Do you think Derek can, we, can win on the cards? Um, look, We've experienced no regrets, yes. We've planned to, to stop this. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We're going in there to stop the guy. Systematically break him down and stop him. Radio Raheem with the very systematic Don Charles going in Saturday night in the corner of Derek Chisura as he faces Dylan White for the second time this Saturday night. We can't wait to see this rematch. I thought the first one was fight of the year. I expect you guys to deliver again. Radio Raheem Guaranteed. with Don Charles.